Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena for yet more DIY fun. This week we're going to be installing some spiffy flooring. We're going to be installing some LED mood lights underneath the tow kick in the galley. And also we're going to be putting up our exterior Christmas lights. If you're new to our channel, my name is Mess and this is my fiance Ava. I've spent the last five years doing a somewhat extensive refit on my 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That involved all kinds of fun stuff like building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, gutting most of the interior to make structural repairs and then subsequently rebuilding most of the interior. I also rebuilt the entire deck and painted the top sides. All of that fun is documented in hundreds of videos here on YouTube. The star of the show this week is going to be our new flooring. This stuff, the Nautic floor. This is non-skid waterproof flooring that's specifically made for marine use. We've gone for a traditional kind of teak and holly look. I don't know what this looks like on camera, but in real life, this stuff looks Awesome. As of right now, our cabin sole is just painted plywood. It doesn't look great and it's also very slippery. So both from a visual standpoint and from a safety standpoint, the Nordic floor is going to be a big improvement. Tomorrow, the tools I need to install the new flooring should show up. Today, we can go ahead and get started installing these LED strips. These are going to provide a bit of mood lighting underneath the toe kick, and that is really going to make the new flooring pop. These are just regular Philips Hue LED light strips. There's absolutely nothing marine about them. I used the same strips in the V-Birth and that worked out fine. The LED strip comes with this power brick that's meant to power the light off of AC. But uh, of course, if we take a look at the back of this, this is outputting DC at 24 volts. We have a nominal 24 volt lithium setup here aboard Athena, but the voltage on that is a little bit above 27 volts, not 24. Also, I really want to be able to control these lights using our digital switching, more specifically the box that's located in the nav station area, and that's hooked up to 12 volts. So to be able to power these, I've picked up a couple of DC-DC converters. This will take the 12-ish volts from our 12 volt system and boost that up to 24 so that we can power the lights without using the wall brick. I've got two of the two meter LED strips and a single one meter extension. One of these lights, we're gonna to have to chop up a little bit to get it to conform to some sharp corners. The plan is to add an LED strip over here and also all the way around the kitchen island here. But of course, down here, there's a sharp 90 degree corner and I don't think the LED strip is gonna be willing to bend to that shape. So hence the need for chopping it up a little bit. But uh, for now, let's just worry about this side over here. Phew, that was a slightly fiddly process, but the lights are in, they're powered off of DC, and we can switch them on and off from our C-Zone digital switching. To switch the colors of the lights, we do have to use the app on the phone. I could add a little smart switch at some point to change in between night mode and day mode, but for now, I think we'll just leave them the way they are. Before calling it quits today, there are a couple of things I want to test. For one, I want to make sure my jigsaw, or my tiny circular saw, makes a nice clean cut in this flooring that's going to be important tomorrow. I also want to test this notched trowel with the adhesive I'm going to be using later in the week, just to make sure that I've got the right notch trowel and the right adhesive. This is the cut from the circular saw. There's a tiny bit of chipping going on here. The cut from the metal blade on the jigsaw looks a lot cleaner. This is the jigsaw on top, a very nice clean cut. The cut on the circular saw, 
not as clean. Because we're going to be taking Athena offshore, the manufacturer recommends gluing the flooring in place, but that's also going to enhance some of its properties, so that might be worth it if you're installing this on something like a narrow boat that's never really going to see much wave action or healing or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I want to do a quick test of the gluing process just to make sure that the notch trowel I've picked up here is the right type. This is a 1.5 millimeter notch trowel. We don't need a lot of adhesive on there, and I think think this is going to do a good job. It's the next morning and our adhesive here seems to have cured nicely. The flooring is stuck on there really well. This brown stuff is Sigaflex 221. This stuff, at least on the spec sheet, is very familiar to 291, which is a common marine adhesive sealer. The only difference is I could get the 221 in brown, which is a much closer color to the flooring, compared to the 291, which I could only get in white or black. The manufacturer recommended using a polyurethane adhesive, which is what the 221 and 291 is. The distributor here in the UK specifically mentioned 291. But like I said, I couldn't get that in brown, so that's why I decided to try the 221. I don't know if this is just me being silly, but I thought having the adhesive be the closest possible color match to the flooring might be good in case I get a little smudge on the flooring or something like that. On the back of the Nordic floor here is some foam for sound dampening and a tiny bit of insulation. And if we look closely at the adhesive here, there's some of that foam stuck in the surface. So yeah, I think we're good with that adhesive. I'm having a little bit of a hard time figuring out where to start laying down the flooring and if I should start with a full board or not. And uh, well, that is something a professional might have an easier time figuring out. I'm not a professional floor guy, but I know one that is. But we have the one and only floor man from the north, flooring extraordinaire, Sam Carano! <laughs> also known as dad to me. Yes. <laughs> Okay, Mads has a couple question, flooring questions for you. We need to bring in the big guns. Yep. So the first question is, like, this is a pretty small area, but it's got lots of nooks and crannies. Like, how do I figure out where to start? Like, do I want to start with a full board or do I somehow want to cut it a little bit smaller? How do I figure out where I want these stripes and whatnot? Well, usually I ask my customers, or we, we determine the main viewing point. The first time you walk into a home, or a room and you, you, you look at the floor, you like it to be balanced out. It's a little different working in a, on a boat as opposed to a home or, or a business. But for your job, I would think when you're coming through the doorway there, you, you're down on the floor, you're yep. looking at the refrigerator. I'd like to see it balanced around the refrigerator. Yep. And and see how it lays going into the walls. Okay. Providing have a small filler for the walls, you try to keep those at at least a, a half the size of a board. Okay. Would be a good look. Our second question is, so do I want to glue these down as I'm laying them, or do I want to fit everything first and then glue it down? I suggest fitting everything first so you have a real nice lay and then disassemble it and glue as you go. Last thing you want to do is to be have a glued floor and have to remove a piece <laughs> with glue all over the place. Yeah. Trying to, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so fit first, glue second. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you so much, Sam. You're very welcome. Any last thoughts or words of wisdom for the noob Floor installers? Yes. Call Sam Carrado at 5 and 473 for a good job and a good price. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dad. You better uh, edit that, that phone number. I don't want to, uh, your chick fans calling. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
And that is all of the flooring for the saloon cut. I think it looks pretty dang spiffy. I didn't get any footage of it last night, but with the new flooring and the toe kick lights, it looks like a million bucks. I got a nice snug fit along the edges. There are a few places where there's just like a millimeter or so of a gap, but that's okay. I can easily fill that with some sealant after the flooring is adhered in place. As you can see, I haven't cut the holes. We need to access the storage that's below the cabin sole or for the bilge for that matter. The plan is to cut rough holes today while we're gluing in the floor. And then tomorrow I'll go over those holes with a flush trimming bit on my router and clean them up. Speaking of tools, Nordic floor is super easy to work with. I've already tested it with the flush trimming bit on my router here. It just it generates a ton of these little flakes here, but it leaves a really nice cut. The same is true for the jigsaw, in this case with the metal blade on there, that seems to work really well. And then just for removing like a tiny fraction of a millimeter, rough sandpaper, in this case 40 grit on an angle grinder, seems to also do a really good job. The most rewarding way to make straight cuts is with a knife. I've only done this for straight cuts, but it is just a matter of scoring the surface a couple of times. And then it just snaps with this really rewarding feeling. Like I said, Nordic Floor is super easy to work with. Having said that, we are at the stage in this process that I am the most worried about, and that is gluing the floor down. So yeah, fingers crossed and uh, let's get started. Before we remove the flooring, we spent a few minutes labeling each piece. This turned out to be very helpful later when trying to find the right piece with adhesive everywhere and a somewhat limited amount of space. Because of the tight tolerances, there wasn't much room for error, so a lot of time was spent trying to figure out the best place to start gluing the floor. In the process of figuring that out, we decided we needed to modify the hatch that gives us access to the compressor for the fridge. A typical boatwork scenario. Anywho, after yet another conversation with Sam, we decided to start gluing around the kitchen island as this would give us the most accurate start. The suggestion from Sam, as well as the distributor here in the UK, to cut and fit everything before busting out the glue turned out to be 100% correct. This is by far the easiest way of doing it. Hours of gluing fun followed before we finally had all of the saloon glued in place. While we're waiting for the glue to cure, Ava decided it was time to get into Christmas mode. The other day while Manta's in the office, we found out that there is a boat Christmas light decorating competition here in Gasport Marina and along with all the other premier system marinas. Immediately my American side came out and I wanted to go crazy with Christmas lights. I don't want to brag, but we did bring home the prize last Christmas in my parents' neighborhood with the theme of Flamingo Santa. But apparently Brits don't like crazy. They like like beautiful and elegant for some reason. So Mads is making me compromise as you have to do in relationships, but we're still gonna light this place up. We're gonna do all white lights and we're gonna do a lot of them. So. Let's get to it. Let's deck these halls. I did get this Rudolph and I have pretty big plans for him. If I'm being really honest, I wanted way more lights than this. Can't forget Rudolph. See, you need to have a system. I like to roll my lights into a ball from the plug end so you can wrap them around whatever you're wrapping around really quick. And see, it's these helpful tips that are going to get you through the holiday season. Light ball. I've already messed up. I have no idea what to do with this end. I have to see if it fits onto some kind of plug. Okay, I definitely did not see this happening. I don't know how to plug this into the other light strip. I'm sure it's straightforward. It's very straightforward in the US, but I'm gonna have to read the directions. This is why people hate putting up Christmas lights. Something always goes wrong. Can I get the extension cord, please? Okay, I figured it out. Just have to re-roll my ball the other way. Now take this off of here. Yep, that's what we want. And plug it into there. Ha! Christmas lights will not smart me. 
And just to be clear, this whole new plug thing is not a US, UK thing. It's just a new fangled LED light. This definitely is not on the Christmas lights I've used before. Ho, ho, ho! The boat is certainly starting to look a lot like Christmas. It's the next morning and our adhesive have cured nicely, so I think it's time to bust out the router. And just like that, all of the hatch openings are opened back up again, including the bilge. Insert obligatory window wonderland joke here. But yeah, I think this looks pretty dang spiffy. After a light bit of cleaning, you can see our hatches are a nice snug fit. I cut the template for those hatches on a CNC machine, so they're all the same size, they're all the same radius, they're all identical. And I think a big part of having this floor look nice is to have these hatches be nice, which is why I went for the whole flush trimming routine. Of course, all of those hatches, the white ones you've just seen, are also going to get covered in flooring and it's going to look super spiffy. Unfortunately, we are out of time for this week. It's Sunday and in a few hours, Ava and I are heading over to our friends aboard Kadoa. They're a fellow Warrior 38 YouTube sailing couple. I'll include a link for their channel down in the description. They're well worth checking out. Yeah, so unfortunately, the hatches are going to have to wait until next week. So far, the Nordic floor is a giant thumbs up. As you guys have seen, it's very easy to cut with various tools. It's very easy to work with. It feels a little bit warmer on the feet than just the painted plywood we had, so that's certainly also an upside. And of course, we don't have to worry about varnishing this. And it has built-in non-skit, so we no longer have a slippery cabin sole. So yeah, so far a giant thumbs up for the Nordic floor. The plan for next week is, like I've mentioned, of course, to finish the hatches. I've also ordered the countertop or tabletop or whatever you want to call it for the table that we're going to have here in the saloon. We already have the telescoping table legs, so maybe we can get that installed next week. And I think I have enough Nordic floor left to do the head possibly also the forward cabin. So yeah, next week should be a lot of fun. So we'll end this video here. Yep, we hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week for yet more DIY fun. Mm -hmm. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you.